Recordex Express is a simple annotation package that allows you to do whiteboarding and incorporate media resources into your whiteboard very easily. So when you open the application, you've got this window, which you can size to whatever size you want. We have an annotation toolbar and a presenter toolbar. The annotation toolbar has your pen tool, a highlighter tool, a set of shapes, an eraser to erase your ink drawings, and then an erase all option to erase everything. You can also insert images, insert document cameras, insert video resources, text, and insert web pages. This allows you to select objects you've already placed, and this allows you to paste things from your clipboard. And this is a typical undo redo button. The presenter tab includes a spotlight mode, a magnify mode, a masking or a shade tool to hide parts of the screen, and then a click through tool, as well as a laser pointer tool, and then this zoom tool, which I'll show you here in a moment. The zoom slider lets you zoom the page in and out, and then this will resume you back to 100% zoom. Okay, let's take a look at some of the tools. So, if you press the options button on the toolbar, you'll see the ability to change your pen, highlighter, and text options. These are the default options for those tools. You can change the width of the pen, the transparency of the ink, and the color. Same for the highlighter, and then for text, you have typical text options here. Now the pre presenter tools, similarly, you have the options for spotlight, magnify, your mask, and your laser pointer. So if I select my pen tool now, I can just use my finger, a stylus, or a mouse. And one nice thing about Express is if you're drawing and you run out of room like I've done here, just select your pen tool again, and then use your finger, mouse, cursor, whatever you're using, and just click on the background and drag. You can drag this any which way you want, up, down, left, right. So I'll move it over a bit and give myself room. You can also swipe from the right hand side, there's a little handle right here, if you can see that, right here there's a little handle, and if I click there and drag left, it's going to open up a side menu. There's also an option to have a little menu button here, which makes that easier for some users. If that little menu button isn't showing, just do this, slide the menu out from the side, and then go to options, and make sure the show menu button is turned on. That side menu provides you with a bunch of different options like open a new book, or create a new book, open a saved book, save the current book, save the current book as something else, clone the current page. If I click that you'll see now we have slide 1 and slide 2 and they're just copies of each other. And then this allows you to delete a page, so I'll delete that second page too. If I just want to add a page here I can add a new blank page. You can mix and match the background, so if I want page 2 to be a different color, then I just come down here to the background, and I can select a different background color. While you're there, you can change the opacity of the background, so I could make it so I could see through to my desktop on the background. Going fully transparent is a nice way to be able to annotate over top of other documents, like here I've got a Google Map pulled up, and I'll, I'll go into that more in a little bit. You can add the style background, which right now there's blank, there's also lined, and grid. You can add subdivisions as well. So let's say you're doing handwriting, you can create a lined paper and then add the subdivision lines. And then you can change the scale of those lines, the size of the spacing with this slider here. So I'm going to go back to the grid. and. Then we'll use the pen tool combined with the shapes tool and we'll just do a little problem here. So maybe I'll change that color and I'll draw a few points on the map or on the grid and then I can select my tool to combine those and here we can go through the Pythagorean theorem together with the class. I make this a little bit smaller. So we've got A, 
B, and C, and you could work this out. Like I mentioned, if I turn the tool off and I use two fingers to pinch, I can zoom this in, or two fingers to, pin to, to slide out, we'll zoom it out. So it's the pinch to zoom in and out feature that you're used to using on most touch devices. Then I can also just drag that and slide it anywhere I want. If I want to erase something, I'll choose the eraser, and I can erase this label. If I click on a line that I drew, it's going to erase the whole line. If I didn't want to do that, I'll click the undo button and get back my label and my line. This will obviously allow you to erase everything, which I'll say no for now. To insert an image, click the insert image, and then just go to where you have some images stored. I've got a nice image here on my desktop. Once you've selected it, just drag with your finger to create the box, and then you've got an image embedded into your whiteboard page. There's also a menu that shows up underneath it where you have options. So I could zoom this in, and I could use this little pan tool up here to pan the image around after I've zoomed it in. I'm going to click the delete to remove that image. I can also insert a document camera image. So here I'm going to click the camera tool and drag a box. Once you've dragged the box, you can use the options beneath it. You can change the resolution. I'm going to pick one that's a little smaller. And then you can change the, you can, here you can also zoom in and out, change the opacity. So this is an actual live camera image. So here we are in Georgia. I could take a snapshot, and now I've got a, a picture from my document camera, and I could go and close my camera tool. In addition to camera resources, you can also select video resources. So I'm going to click on the video tool, and I can choose a locally stored video. I've got one on my desktop. Once it's placed, you can use the handles on the object to resize it. You can also use two fingers to rotate. So this is an embedded video object with the player controls here. Once you click off the object, those player controls will go away. To select them again, make sure the object select tool is here, and just click on the object and then the toolbar comes up again. You can also embed web video, and here you can place a URL to a YouTube or a Vimeo link, and it will embed that YouTube directly into the player, into the, the page. And then one of my favorites, well, here you can insert text, and that's just pretty standard. You can use the on-screen keyboard to insert text, and you can place it wherever you want. Move it around, drag it, etc. My favorite tool is the web tool. So with the website tool, I can drag a box. And this is going to create a live browser window inside my whiteboard page. And this is a, a live functioning browser. So I can resize the, the page after I've done this. And I can scroll inside the page. I can even launch video content from inside the page. And what's cool about this is then I could use my pen tool and I could annotate on top of the website. And then if I unselect my pen tool and I zoom in or out using my pinch to zoom, I can even zoom in on that web page with the annotation scaling with it. A little note about the web page is if you want to move it around after you've placed it, you need to click the little unlock tool here. When it's unlocked, then you can move the object around on the page. In order to navigate the web page again, you want to go back down and click the lock tool, and that will relock the page. The other tools are the spotlight tool. You can use two fingers again to pinch and zoom that bigger or smaller. If you tap it once, there'll be a little menu below, and that gives you the ability to change the options or close the tool. Same thing for the magnifying glass. Tap it once, and you can adjust the level of zoom and the size, or the shape. 
the hide tool gives you the ability to anchor the the slide, the shade at the top, bottom, left, or right, and then move it up or down. So this way I could cover up most of the page and just reveal as I want it to go. Click the red X over here to close it. The click through tool is pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete everything on my page right now. Let's say I'm getting ready, um, I'll change my background to white, and I'm going to get rid of those lines. I don't need them. Okay, so let's say we're going to talk today about Washington, D.C. So, I can click my click-through tool, and now what this is going to do is put me into a transparent mode, and I can then interact with objects behind the screen. So, I could zoom in on this map of Washington, D.C. I could open up a file. It's just a nice way to be able to get access to things behind your browser. I'll click the click-through tool again, and then it goes back to where it was. Now what if I wanted to actually annotate it over top of that Google map? Well, what I'll do is I can either bring that inside my web browser, like this, and I'll type maps.google.com. Here I've got a web browser, and I'll put in Washington, D.C. Now I've got this live map of Washington, D.C., zoom in, zoom out, and annotate on top of it. The other option that I would have is to go to full transparent mode. So here I'm going to go to make my background totally transparent, and now I can annotate over top of the map as well. You do this with any open document. It's a nice way to be able to annotate it over top of just about anything. And like I showed you before, if you're zoomed in or zoomed out and you want to go back to one-to-one, -to -one, just press this button and it'll take everything back to fit the screen. Alright, so that's a quick introduction. There's a couple other little tools on the side. There's a link to Screencast-O-Matic, which will allow you to do a screencast recording of the page. There's also a snapshot tool. If I click this, I can take a snapshot of the whole page. Copy the clipboard, save it to file, or print it. pasted that now. I could draw a box and there's a pasted copy of the file that I just, the screenshot I just took. I can also take a snapshot of just a little portion, drawing a box, and now I can copy that to the clipboard and paste it. You see it has had this little snapshot now. And finally, with I can do a freehand selection. I can just draw a circle around that part, copy up my clipboard and paste it, and now you can see I've just got that little freehand selection. Alright, there's a quick introduction to Express 2.3. It's pretty easy to use. Just click around and get used to navigating the interface, and have fun annotating and incorporating lots of media resources into your whiteboard.